What's cooking, everybody? Dave Altizer here with Kinotika. Today we're talking about the new Sony A7 III for video. The Sony a7 III has been out for a couple of months now, and we've kind of been putting off reviewing this camera because I feel like it's been talked about a lot on YouTube, but by popular demand, we ended up buying one, and we're really happy that we did because honestly, this camera is one of the best ones out there. In fact, we're shooting this review on the Sony a7 III in 4K, so you can kind of get an idea of what the video quality looks like with this video that you're seeing right now, me sitting here. But yeah, let's get right into it. This review is a video-centric review. We're going to be doing other reviews on the photo and just overall performance of this camera. In fact, if you have any suggestions on what kind of things you'd like to see in the future about the a7 III, leave a comment below so that we can maybe do something that you wanna see with this camera. By the way, we are actually in a completely new set. What do you think? It's much bigger than the other ones. I can actually stretch my arms out and not touch the walls. By the way, if you want to see a behind the scenes look on how we got here, check out KBTS, a whole new series designed by Connor McCaskill, our very own, on his channel. We'll link it above in the eye icon. Before we get into some of the specific tests of the a7 III for video, let's go over some of the specs. This camera has a 24 megapixel full frame sensor inside of it. Yes full frame. This camera also has the amazing autofocus performance from all the new Sony cameras like the a6500, the a7R 3 so we're getting really great tracking for video. The camera is super lightweight, it's 1.43 pounds. Obviously once you build it out, put monitors and cages on it and things like that, or maybe a battery grip it gets bigger, but it's nice to have such a small lightweight body to deal with for video. Unfortunately the video on this camera can only record up to 30 minutes before it cuts off, that's for both 4k and 1080p if you want longer record times then you're gonna have to use an external monitor recorder kind of like one from Atomos to just get an HDMI feed straight out of the camera and then you can technically record as long as you want the color science on all of the new Sony cameras over the last couple of months has gotten much much better in fact I'm really excited to say that I feel like they've kind of fixed a lot of the issues with the color of course it doesn't look completely identical to Canon doesn't look identical to Fuji it has its own kind of Sony look, but at this point, I don't think the color is bad. I think over the last couple of years with the A7S, especially the A7S II and the A7S before it, the color was just not good, like just flat out not good. I could never get it perfect. And even with color correction and recording ProRes off of the camera, it just never looked right. Sony has finally done this and with some of these special color profiles from EOS HD, I feel like the color is kind of fixed, which is great. We did some tests at the lake using different color picture profiles. The Sony profiles are fine. If you're not wanting to buy a special profile, then I would suggest using the Cine 2 profile. It looks pretty pretty good and it grades well. If you want something just straight out of the camera though, I would really recommend that you pick up the EOS HD V4 Pro Color Profile for Sony a7 III and a7R III. It's really great and once you learn to use this new HLG profile correction mode, it's kind of amazing how much dynamic range is held in the image and how good the overall image quality is. The skin tones look good, the dynamic range looks great, and Honestly, that's the profile that we're shooting most everything on. Right here, right now, you're looking at it. This is the EOS HD Pro Color V4 Picture Profile 3 mode. It's a mouthful. The rolling shutter performance on this camera is definitely improved from the previous cameras like the a7S, for example, but it's not as good as the a7R 3 unfortunately. However, if rolling shutter performance is really important to you, then I would suggest switching over to the 1080p mode. In both full frame and super 35 mode, the 1080p looks pretty good, and if you're running around and you really want good rolling shutter performance, then just switch to 1080p. While we're on that note, I will mention that this camera does have both a full frame mode and a super 35 mode, which is amazing for videographers. You can do it in both 1080p and 4K. Yes, I said it, 4K. With the a7 III, because we have a 24 megapixel sensor, you're actually able to do both a full frame mode and a super 35 mode. The full frame mode, however, is gonna give you the sharpest and cleanest 4K because it's actually taking a 6K sensor and down resing it to 4K internally. What that means is it's basically reading a full image straight off that 24 megapixel sensor 
and just compressing it down to 4K. This is great to have and a lot of other cameras don't have this type of feature built in. On the a7R 3 for example, it's doing this exact same kind of compression in the Super 35 mode. So the Super 35 mode on the a7R 3 is actually better in 4K than the full frame mode. This is the reverse situation. In full frame, you have better 4K. In Super 35, it's definitely fine, but I think it's doing some line skipping on the sensor, so it's not as sharp. It's a little bit softer, and you may have a little bit more aliasing and more A. While we're on the topic of stretching and cropping and moving around, I will mention this. A huge issue with this camera. Our friend Caleb Pike from DSLR Video Shooters made an entire video about what I'm about to say, so check his video out in the eye icon above and in the description below, but I have to tell you this. There is this really weird bug with this camera in only one mode, 4K at 24 frames per second in full frame. Not 4K at 30 frames per second, not 4K in crop mode, not 1080p in full frame, but only 4K, 24 frames per second, full frame. The image has this strange stretching issue. Now, it's nothing that your eye is going to just pick up naturally. It's only something that you can see if you look at a chart or you look at side-by-side -side images, but technically it's wrong and needs to be fixed. Now, let's put those two images together, and as you can see, there is a slight stretching going on with the 24 frame per second mode. This is so weird. I've never seen anything like this before. Go into Final Cut or Premiere and stretch the x-axis by 1%, and that solves the stretching issue. It's definitely a bug and it's definitely something that I think Sony can fix. So we want to put this out there on YouTube so that Sony gets word of this and it's just, I don't know, it's just so weird. This camera has IBIS, which is great. A full frame camera with internal body image stabilization. I will say, however, it is nowhere near as good as what you can get on the Panasonic GH5 or the Olympus cameras, but it is better than nothing. It's better than Canon because Canon doesn't have it at all. So if you're a video shooter and say you're filming yourself a lot, you're probably gonna use a monitor, right? Well, there is one little caveat with all Sony cameras, not just this one. When you plug in a monitor when you're shooting 4K, you actually lose face tracking and autofocus and there's no data coming into the monitor. So you can't see if you're recording, you can't see your ISO settings. It's just a clean feed out, which is great for external recorders. Of course, you don't want to see all that data on your image or if you're doing a live stream, but it's just a pain in the butt if you're, say you're vlogging or a YouTuber, you wanna make sure that your face is in focus, you you want to make sure that your ISO and everything is set properly. As soon as you switch to 1080p mode, however, on all Sony cameras, you do get all that stuff back through the monitor when you're using a monitor. So I would say this, if you're shooting 4K, so you're filming yourself and you wanna check your focus, make sure that everything is set, plug in your monitor, but then unplug it when you hit record. Kind of a pain in the butt, kind of dumb. Just a little thing that I wanted to mention when you're shooting 4K, you don't get those features when you're using a monitor. The camera has slow motion up to 120 frames per second in 1080p mode. However, the 1080p 120 frames per second is a little bit bad. It's okay. It's not great. It's better than the M50, for example, that only has 720p and it's doesn't even have autofocus. So you do have autofocus. You do have the ability to shoot in 1080p, but the image quality is not super good. As soon as you switch to 60 frames per second, however, the image quality is great. So if you want to shoot slow motion, I would recommend shooting 1080p at 60 frames per second. If you need to go to 120 frames per second, it's there, but it's nowhere near like a 1DX Mark II or or a C200, for example. Battery life on Sony cameras have had a really bad reputation over the years. The A6300 only gave you like 15 to 20 minutes. The A7S2 only gave you about 30 minutes and it was just awful when you wanted to shoot video. They've totally fixed that. With the A7 III line of cameras, you now have up to like three hours of video record time on one battery. Really amazing. If you get that battery grip, that makes it even more. And another additional thing that's wonderful with Sony cameras is you can actually charge the battery as you're using it. In fact, right now we have the camera plugged into the wall just over USB. It's charging the camera and powering it as we're using it. It's really handy dandy wow. and I really love that feature. One little thing to know about the a7 III, however, and this does not apply to the a7R 3 is they don't include a charger like this. This is a charger that came with the Canon M50. 
It's nice and compact, has a little flip out AC plug. You just plug that into the wall and you're good to go. It doesn't come with one of these. You have to buy one separately. It does come with a little USB brick and a USB cable that you can then plug into the camera. So if you have a battery in the camera and you plug it into the wall, that's how you charge it. That's not ideal because if you run out of battery and you need to charge it, the only way you can charge it is through the camera itself. So having a charger like this is pretty essential for when you're shooting. Also another fun thing to think about, if you have a new MacBook Pro, for example, you can actually use one cable and that's it. With this charging cable for my computer, I can also dump all my footage from my camera. The a7 III has a USB-C port on it and as soon as you plug it into your laptop, you can actually import all your footage over the same cable that you use to charge it. Also, let's say you want to shoot on the Ronin S gimbal and get some sexy gimbal shots with your a7 III. You now have three devices, your MacBook, a7 III, and a Ronin S that all only require one cable and that's it. Kind of fun to live in this little USB-C world now. If you're using this camera for pro video, then you're gonna wanna have pro audio as well. Sony has a solution for that. They have a great XLR adapter that you just put on the hot shoe and it doesn't require any cables at all. It actually connects through the hot shoe. There's some electronics there. It's a wonderful thing to have. The preamps on this camera are actually pretty decent. So now you're shooting full frame 4K video with great autofocus and proper XLR input. Honestly, a lot of things about the a7 III tie over to the a7R III. If you watch our video reviews on the a7R III, a lot of those same things that I liked about that camera actually are pretty much identical to this camera. The only thing is this camera is $1,000 cheaper and it's better at 4K full frame. Overall, the a7 III is a really powerful video camera. It shoots 4K at full frame with great autofocus, which is what everybody wants, but it's fixed the color issues that I've always hated about Sony cameras. Is the Sony a7 III the best camera right now for video? Yeah, for the next two months at least. If you guys have any ideas of what we should do with the a7 III, comment below. If you're new here, thanks for watching this video and please subscribe. We have lots of more videos that you are gonna love. Once again, I'm Dave Altizer. This is a cup of coffee that's been hiding behind this box. See you next time.